Hi again then guys and welcome to the SHM breakdown and review of another movie and as you'll have seen from the title this is a much newer film than the types of movies that I would usually review I tend to go for older more obscure films but this is a movie which I saw very recently yesterday in fact and it is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Now this film is very critically mixed at the moment. Critics are generally not reviewing it well, whereas fans are still mixed, but generally more positive. So what's the breakdown? Well, without spoiling anything, as I don't in any of my reviews, the movie is about, as the title suggests, Batman going up against Superman. It's a match which comic book fans have wanted to see for decades, and I would say that that aspect of the movie pays off really well. Now we're going to get more in depth as far as rating that in a second, but the motivations of Batman and Superman going up against each other were the main issue that I had going into the film as to how they would play that out. Because at the end of the day they're both good guys, so why fight? I know they do in the comics, but there's got to be a good on-screen reason, especially as with movies they will often change character motivations when compared to the comics. It made sense to me. Both characters were just as justifiable as each other. Superman and Batman are both presented in a slightly different light to the way that they usually are, and I like that. Ben Affleck's Batman was a very interesting Batman. Christian Bale would still be my favourite Batman all round on screen so far, but that's mainly due to the fact that we've had more of him, so he gets more of a character arc over the three Nolan movies, whereas Ben Affleck has only had the one movie where he's portraying a very specific period of Batman's life. And for that period, I think he did really well. It was a completely different Batman to anything we've seen so far, and I like that. I already liked Henry Cavill as Superman in Man of Steel, I'm a fan of that movie, and it's the kind of film where if you enjoyed Man of Steel, you will still like Superman. His character is a little bit more nuanced now, he has more experience than he did then, and he's Superman. So he doesn't have the most in-depth level of character, compared to Batman especially, but still, he's an entertaining character, he certainly looks the part, and he's my favourite Superman on screen to date. Now getting into maybe some aspects which I didn't enjoy as much, again without spoilers, the primary thing that I didn't enjoy as much about this movie was Lex Luthor. Now I don't have anything against Jesse Eisenberg, I've seen him in things that I like, and I don't think he did a strictly speaking bad job in this movie. I think he was an interesting Lex Luthor, or Lex Luthor Jr. But that's not what I wanted. And from the general consensus, that's not what fans wanted either. I personally much prefer Kevin Spacey's Lex Luthor, who was a much more traditional, old school, closer to the comics, and more brutal Lex Luthor, which is exactly what he should be. Highly intelligent, but ruthless. This version of Lex Luthor is slightly more ADD. Certainly clever, but just not really the Lex Luthor that I would have wanted to see. Now as far as the breakdown, first of all we have the story and plot. For the story and plot, I'm going to give the film a 7. Because although I like the story, and as I said, the reasons for them going up against each other make sense, and the film is very entertaining, it's a little bit choppy. The editing is a little bit back and forth, and whereas some films need to do that, going backward and forward in time, even movies recently like Deadpool go back and forward in time, multiple times throughout the movie. This film sometimes does it in ways which feel a little bit rushed. For the most part it didn't bother me that much because I still enjoyed each part of the film and being a two and a half hour movie in its cinematic form it needed to break it up. You can't have one long story over two and a half hours with today's audiences. That just doesn't work anymore. People don't have that kind of attention span. So in effect, by chopping up the film into, in effect, multiple little stories that interconnect by the end of the film, I thought that was a good thing to do, and I liked that. It kept it interesting, and it meant that you didn't get the feeling that any particular character was getting stale. I liked that. I would also have liked a more cohesive, linear story, 
but I'm not going to knock it for what it did. I enjoyed it, it was different, and it prevented it from being just another Batman or Superman movie. So it's a 7 overall for the story and plot. Not the most amazing thing ever, but I enjoyed it. As far as the characters and their motivations, I'm going to give it a 9. Because the characters are excellent. The casting, as far as I'm concerned, apart from primarily Lex Luthor for me personally, was really good. I like the people who are cast in the roles. They look the part, they sound the part, they act the part. And although it's not necessarily as much of an acting piece as some other films, they are playing hugely iconic characters. And I think they did a really good job of that. So overall, I'm giving the characters a 9. As far as motivations, I already mentioned earlier on that it makes sense why they would go up against each other. And the battle is fair. Again, without spoiling anything. It keeps it interesting. It keeps you believing that both of them have a chance in this movie. As far as the visuals and effects, well, it's a superhero movie made in 2016, so it's highly unlikely that it would be bad. And again, I'm giving it a 9 for that. The visuals are very good, the costumes, the characters look fantastic, the sets are great. Towards the end of the film it gets very heavy on the CGI. I know a lot of people dislike that. Personally, I think it would have been extremely difficult to make the ending of the film as good as I believe it was, without using that much CGI. By the nature of the character at the end of the film, the primary character I won't mention, but those who have seen it will know, you can't do that without using CGI. It just doesn't allow it. And I found the ending to be epic. All of the CGI was good. Sure, you could tell it was CGI, but you can with pretty much any movie. So, it's a 9 overall from me. As far as the soundtrack, the music, the audio in general, I'm going to give it an 8. The sounds are good, the music is good, it's Hans Zimmer, so it's never going to be bad, really. It didn't stand out as much as some other iconic soundtracks from Batman or Superman movies, but it was good. The Batman voice with the voice changer was really cool, it was one of my personal favourite things about the film, and overall the soundtrack was good, so an 8 out of 10 is what I'm giving it for that. And finally, for the rewatchability and entertainment factor, which is, of course, the most specific to me personally, the most subjective, I'm going to give Batman v Superman an 8, because it's the kind of film that I will definitely watch again multiple times. And actually, I think that the way that this movie was edited in kind of a jumpy way actually benefits it in that regard, because I've watched extremely long movies before, and although I still enjoy them, I may be less likely to watch an ultra-long movie back-to-back, -back, whereas this movie, by the nature of jumping around different storylines, but having an ending which tied them all up together, meant that for me personally, it's actually more likely to be the kind of film that I would watch back-to-back -back and still enjoy. So overall, our tabulated score of the five categories put together is a very respectable 4.1 out of five, which is significantly higher than most critics' reviews at the moment. But that's it overall for my review of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, and my verdict for the film is, well, you're probably going to go and see it anyway if you haven't already, but if you hadn't planned on it, if you're a superhero fan, definitely check it out. If you're not, you probably won't be as bothered anyway, in which case I doubt you'll have clicked on this video. But if you haven't got around to seeing it, I would recommend it, especially if you're a Batman fan in particular. And that's it overall, so I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.